Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 in Flux. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about some movies. Well, one movie in particular, because that's what we do on this show. We talk about a movie every week, or sometimes more than once a week, depending on how the schedule is. But yeah, so we're doing a an older film here. We're doing a classic. Uh, we're going all the way back to 1956, and we're going to talk about the original, well, as far as I know, it's the original version of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, so this is directed by Don Siegel, science fiction film, uh, a little bit of horror, and uh, obviously it's been remade a number of times. Uh, most famously, the 1978 version, uh, is, you know, is widely enjoyed by many, uh, and we may do that at some point. But we we wanted to go back and do the original classic, black and white, uh, all that stuff, all the jazz. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start spoiler free, uh, and then we'll, we'll give you some spoiler warning before we go into the the rest of it. And that's it. So. I suppose uh, I usually start with a description of what the movie actually is, what it's about. Uh, and it feels a little bit weird to do it with the vision, vision of the Body Snatchers because it, it feels like the sort of plot that most people should be familiar with at this That's point. It. Even if you haven't seen this version or even, you know, the, the more famous version, then, you know, you've seen this story told somewhere. Probably. Maybe you didn't realise it was a knockoff of Vision of the Body Snatchers, but the idea is that Basically, people in this small town, you know, this, this main character, the Doctor, uh, Miles, comes back home, and his small town, the some people are starting to complain that some of their loved ones aren't their loved ones anymore. Like, no, I mean, it looks like my father, it sounds like my father, he's got all the memories of my father, but there's something not quite right. Uh, but, of course, the, the, the plot progresses, and, lo and behold, there's these alien pod things which are replacing people. Uh, yes. and hence the title of the film which is Invasion of the Body Snatchers because they're snatching bodies and replacing them with their own uh, for what purpose uh, we can only speculate but uh, but that, that's that's the movie that's Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, I had seen this before uh, a few years ago uh, I don't think you had this was the first time for you it was the first time yeah uh, so I suppose I'll start with the question that I usually start with did you enjoy Invasion of the Body Snatchers 1956 I did it was a uh... Very well told. Of course, it's it's pretty, the, the most simplistic version of this story that I've seen, based on it not having to have innovated on top of itself because of its nature of being the first. Yeah, of the nature of it just being, this is the idea. Let's just do the right. idea. Exactly. Every, every other version you've seen since innovates and does has to put a spin on it to justify it existing. But... And, yeah, this, usually, this and, and to be fair, usually fails. The 78 remake's kind of a weird anomaly where, oh no, people, it's actually quite good and people like it, whereas... You know, I mean, I haven't seen all the versions, but I saw I saw the. It was just called Invasion. It was the. It was Daniel Craig and I think Nicole Kidman for two thousand seven, and it was so bad. It was so boring. Can't say I had the pleasure of watching that one. Oh no! Oh, I was not into it at all. Uh, I like this one quite a bit as well. It is proper classic sort of sci-fi, fifties, uh, bringing the the horror kind of home a little bit because it's like you know in this you know, yeah. small town America kind of thing and. Um, obviously, it's like a lot of science fiction, there's some obviously some messaging in here and some things it's playing with that it's yeah, you know, it's big, big, broad themes that are very clear. Yeah, go, going on behind the surface, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's all good. Uh, by the way, did you? When you probably didn't, I, I didn't. I just happened to look at the name and I was like, "Wait, that, that looks familiar." Uh, the lead actor here who plays uh, Miles, uh, he was in a movie that we did recently. Was he? Yeah, he was. He was much older in that movie because this is 1956. But he was. He was in inner space. He was uh, one of the villains. Oh, okay, cool. That was him. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, but the same, now, now that I, as soon as I seen the picture of him older, I'm like, oh yeah, I can actually see it's him. Like I can see the yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the aging difference, but I can see it's him. That's um, how time works. It's well, it's about thirty years of a difference. So I, uh, yeah, you you look a little bit different. Uh, I can only imagine you'll improve in thirty years because it can't get worse. I beg to differ. Well, go for it then. <laughs> go on, <laughs> break break the records. Uh, but yeah, so so uh, no, so good good kind of traditional science fiction film. Uh, that's it. It does like I think when you say that, you kind of assume that it, you know it's, it's going to have a very simplistic sort of style to it. I actually do think there's a fair bit of a. Uh, cinematic flair to this one as much yeah, as it, it, it plays like a, a thriller 
Yeah, it plays like a thriller. It's got a little bit of a noir kind of feel because he's he's sort of narrating the story in hindsight. Yeah. Like we, he's you see him at the start. He's already went through the story and he's like trying to tell this doctor and the, the policeman. He's like, yeah. "This is what's happening. You believe me?" That that kind of whenever I hear that narration, I, I typically think of noirs like that. Yeah, that's kind of how it feels. Even though the plot's not really anything like a noir, like there's a little bit of an investigation to a point, but I guess you know once it gets on, it's more of a a survival movie than it is anything else. Once it really gets going, yeah. but. Uh, that's uh, kind of it. Kind of feels that way in the setup. Uh, a lot of Dutch angles, which I was really noticing as it goes on. Typically, when people are horrified by something, the angle, the camera will be really slanted, and it's kind of like this. It's uh, quite severe, isn't it? Yeah, and again, it's, it's it's a persistent thing. So it's very much the this is the movie style. This is like a recurring element, and it gives it this overall feel where it, it keeps coming back to it. Uh, again, it's this idea of it's it's not right because it's not straight. You're not looking at it right. It's 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 off. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's got style. And I think that's notable because I do think I'll, when I think of sci- science fiction from this time period, I typically assume it's really simple in terms of how it's shot. I think yeah, for the most part, from what I've seen, it is. It's like they, they typically have the idea and the the scripts are good, but in terms of direction and style, yeah, they're I'm, very simplistic. I'm thinking of stuff like you know, thing from another world or. Uh, just you know, all, all these like universal movies that came mm. out around this time period. Like, there's a lot of them, but a lot of them do feel like oh, it's people on sets and they're, they're you know they're enjoyable movies. But this one feels like it has a bit more stale. It feels a bit more modern because it is actually playing with things and it's yeah, it's playing with light and dark and silhouette and a few other moments. It's it's not it's not every single step of the way. There is there are some some more conventional scenes, but then there's scenes where there's like someone running about in the a highway, and it feels like, you know, for the time period, like, I don't feel like I, you see a lot of scenes like this back in this time period, because they tend to, again, keep it simpler so it's easier to shoot, because they make it Especially hand- in, like you say, in science fiction movies, where I feel like at the time we're a bit goofier for the most part. Um, yeah, yeah. Not, not always, but like, like you said, like for a science fiction movie, this it has a very you know science fiction core idea, but it doesn't do anything outlandish with it. it. It plays it very straight. Oh yeah, it plays it straight. It plays it plays it for the horror that it is, and it talks about its, its, its themes and its its ideas. And obviously, the simplest one is uh, just how precious humanity is, and how you know it's important to keep who you are and not become one of the drones of society. Like that's yeah, kind of the obvious message. I think there were some other things in there as well, which I'll talk about when we get to spoilers. But well, I think yeah, just given the the time period as well, more on that, but more specific, it's about you know communism. Yeah, com- communism. Um, I even read a little bit of uh, fascism in there as well. T- p- particularly, I mean, obviously, communist is the the main one because everyone's kind of this equal. Like, yeah, it's this uniformity. Yeah, automaton. They don't have feelings. That's kind of the big thing with the the like the, the replacements. But like, it was just it, the. the I'll talk, I'll talk about the spoilers. I don't want to like get too okay. deep into uh, some of the plot details, but there, there was a couple of there was a couple of things that reminded me of certain fascist elements, uh, which I thought was an interesting little read on it as well. But uh, so you got that. You, you got uh, a likable main character for the most part. He, he's he's definitely not. He's not super down to earth. Uh, he, he's kind of the the perfect movie protagonist a little bit in a lot of ways. Where you know he, he's he's a doctor. He's good looking. He's got this you know pretty love interest and. Uh, he seems he's, to be. He's charming, so you like him. Yeah, yeah, but he's he's definitely like I wouldn't say he's a grounded person, but he's you know he he works well for the movie, uh, and he's he's got his love interest uh, whose name's Becky, and they have kind of a fun romance together because they're like they actually know each other. They've known each other since school, uh, but they both and they had a thing in school, but they both went and married other people. And at first, when like someone suggests to him, oh, maybe you're going to see Becky. She's back in town because she's been living abroad. She was you know in London for uh, years. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, I don't, I don't date married women or whatever. But then we find out she's also divorced. Like they've, they've both went off and married other people, but they've both ended their relationships. And it, you know, it's maybe this subtle thing where like, oh, maybe they'll, maybe it's because they're meant for each other. Maybe they, you know, they, 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 maybe they didn't fight it, but circumstances led them to other paths. And no, no, they, 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 maybe they, they shouldn't have done that. And uh, but it, they're playful. They know each other, so it makes it different from other like movie romances because it's not. Oh, There's no introduction and building the relationship. Yeah. It's already there. They're already like referencing stuff and they, they make knowing comments to each other and it kind of works. And it sets up some cool stuff that pays off later in the movie. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, I, I don't think they're the best characters in the world, but they're, they're solid enough. You you like them. And yeah. when stuff starts going down, like, sh- you know, they're, they're 
relatively uh, capable. Yeah, and I like that it utilizes the details that it does give us. Like you say, like in the relationship pays off. The fact that he's a doctor isn't just for the sake of it. It actually has relevance. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Because obviously a lot of the, the movie's plot is that he is... He's looking right. into these these problems that people are bringing up because that's his job, and he right. But even the way other characters treat him and react to him, they they go, "Hey, you're a, you know, like you're a doctor. You you have these opinions. They know, and they, mm. they they use that to base who he is." Yeah, yeah. Uh, so no, so this character's good. Uh, there's not a lot of effects in this version. Like uh, one of the things about the later versions that are quite notable is that they're very effects heavy. You know, it's all body horror as they're becoming the new people and whatnot. Whereas this one plays it more simple. It is quite creepy actually. Like even even just the idea of how they like they become like these people are actually kind of is is creepy. But it's very theoretical. You don't really see a whole lot of it. Uh, you see the pods themselves, and you see a little bit of bubbles coming out of them and stuff. But it, you know, it's it's very simple, very. It's, uh, it's mostly basic. hidden, isn't it? Yeah, it's mostly and hidden. Left, left to your imagination. And that's that's fine. Like so, some of the best movies ever have things like that where it's left to your imagination. Uh, it, it's it's also just a sign of knowing you know what they can and can't do with the budget as well. Like, why why do something that's gonna you know, probably look goofier than everything else and maybe you know ruin the moment when you can just imply things. Well, yeah, I mean it's 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 just knowing your own tone. Like, yeah, it keeps it grounded because. It would clash with what the tone they're going for with the rest of the movie is. That's the, I mean that's just as true today as it is in the nineteen fifties. Like, uh, you you don't put something silly. You 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 don't have a really tense movie where you're keeping the monster hidden the whole time and it's all about imagining what it could be and it keeps it feeling like oh this is real people going through this real horrific thing. But then you actually introduce a monster in the the last act of the movie that's got tentacles and is like really rubbery looking and all that. It just you know it clashes with the tone. Whereas if the movie's more goofy and it's like you know poking fun at itself and it's it's got that kind of laid back kind of attitude. When the goofy monster with the tentacles and the the rubbery face shows up, it's not actually a big deal. It's like oh that just fits with what's right. going on. Uh, so that, that's kind of you know here it, it knew not to do that because uh, another example uh, sort of a, a show we've been working through recently is The Leftovers where The Leftovers has this big fantastical thing happen that's the premise of the show is that all these people disappeared uh, just randomly one day but the show never actually shows you a shot of someone just vanishing because it, they made the choice, they went, no, if we show that, it kind of shows, you know, it's kind of a goofy, fantastical moment where that's not really what the point it, is. It, the, the whole thing just shows people's reactions, the effect of it, which is, you know, the purpose of that show. Yeah, and that's kind of what, again, what, what not all sci-fi movies at the time did, but this one certainly does, is it, it uses the reactions, it uses the the human element of it away from the actual kind of effects to yeah. to sell it and it works it, it works really well especially since it is going through this kind of uh narration where he's recounting the, the elements and he's going through the whole thing and it it plays into that whole idea of he's telling a story um so much like the people he's talking to they can't actually see anything he's saying so as much as we're seeing the majority of it it kind of puts us in the same boat as them where oh they're, they're hearing about these pods and things, we, we don't but, see the reality of it yeah uh, we, we, we hear the fantastical elements of his story and we hear that again through all the dialogue and everything they're reacting to and again it plays to what the people he's telling the story to are seeing because they're seeing him be kind of like frantic and he's kind of like uh, when we first see him he's, he's kind of raving he's, he is almost like a madman at the start because he's like oh. so you know it works well on a storytelling device it, it puts us in the same position as the people hearing the story in the movie so definitely so no uh so it's it's pretty enjoyable. So I I will say now. Well, I think we'll go into some spoilers uh, a bit more now. So full spoilers from this point on. Um. So big thing in the movie. So he hears these people like say, oh, you know that uncle, uh, whatever his name is, Ira. He's not my uncle. He, I mean, he looks like my uncle. Mm. He talks like my uncle. He's got the memories, but there's something not quite right. There's some sort of spark of humanity that's missing. And obviously, we find out later that these these uh, replacements. They don't. They don't feel emotion, which is why the spark is missing. Like that's the, that's yeah. the key thing that's that's not there. Um. So, but it really picks up. So a lot of the, the first like twenty thirty minutes of the movie is like you know he's 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 with Becky. He's oh let's go out to dinner and he he, he goes and like convinces uh, like Wilma that you know that is your uncle. Like well I'll I'll, I'll get I'll set you up with the psychiatrist and he even goes and talks to the psychiatrist. He's like yeah there's been a lot of these reports over the last few weeks. It's like this weird epidemic, this mass hysteria. And it's like, yeah. but obviously they have no reason to think it's actually 
you know, people are being replaced. Right, and it's 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 all these people who are coming in saying they need to see the doctor, but then suddenly they're just fine. Yeah, yeah, it's just that change in personality at some point for some, you know, again unknown. But it's building the suspense. It's building that there's something brewing under the surface, and that's kind of, kind of, you know, where it's going. Uh, so, but where it really picks up in terms of plot is their the the friend. Uh, uh, Jack and his wife call him like, oh, you need to come. It's an emergency. Like they're actually out on a date. They're at dinner and they're having this sweet moment and all the rest of it. And they get called to his house and he's found a body. Uh, yeah. And it's basically it's a it's one of these these pod people who have not finished developing. Basically, they they get spit out as a kind of like a blank slate, and yeah. they morph into the person they're going to replace. Uh, so obviously, I, I think I called it first. Well, that's going to be Jack. That's that's that was his replacement. Yeah, and that comes up later on. Like the wife notices it later on. But what one of the fascinating things is in this scene, he gets a cut in his hand because his wife's speculating all these weird things, and he he panics and he he cuts his hand. And later on, the copy has a cut up here on its hand because I, I think not this time because I'd seen it before. But but the first time watching, it, I thought, oh, that cut's going to be a tell later on. We're going to know it's a copy because he's not got the cut. Right, and but then it, it kind of just throws that out the window. Yeah, but I, I like that because it's almost like even though in the fifties, like I wouldn't have expected it to like subvert those expectations, but it, it totally does. It's like no, no, the copy yeah. has the cut as well. You can't it's play like by they're, those they're rules. They're ahead of you. Yeah, however, whatever they're doing to copy, they're doing it up to date. Like you know, but yeah. there, I think there's something genuinely creepy about a uh, a body that doesn't have fingerprints because like, they, t- they take the fingerprints and it's just a solid color like yeah. the ink's just solid there's no lines yeah, or nothing. And, and the idea that the face is not really there yeah like there's kind of a nose and eyes and a mouth but there's no features. nothing you could recognize it and from i will criticize it a little bit it did feel weird in this scene that there was never a close-up of the face with whatever it looked like yeah again it's a case of they knew it would look weird so they chose not to but uh, this is the thing, though. I think this is the one thing. Like, out of all the things in the movie, I think the idea of a featureless face is the one thing that would actually be a good weird. Like that would that would sell the creepiness. Like yeah. it would take a bit of designing. Like you get someone in to design what this thing looks like. But I think that would uh, like it's that that whole thing with uh you know those masks that are just slightly clear, so you can kind of see through them, but it obscures the face. Mm. And they're like some of the creepiest masks you can get because it, it's just like you know it's the idea of like intentionally getting into the uncanny valley. That's essentially yeah. what it is. It, it's it's just like a, a a realistic dummy. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, and uh, I think you know it would have maybe paid off to like show that there in that scene. But that that's kind of where it picks up, and then you know they go home. So all right, keep it here overnight. Keep an eye on it. Let's see what it does. Um, and obviously, we find out later on that falling asleep is what uh, triggers them Triggers. into swapping them. Uh, so that becomes a thing later on in the movie where they have to try and stay awake to to not be replaced. Which I wonder if uh, that was an inspiration. To an extent of for uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Wes Craven. I wonder if he was a fan of that idea. Maybe that's part of the. I don't know. It was... Makes sense. Because a, a lot of it later on, just because a lot of Nightmare on Elm Street becomes. Have you seen Nightmare on Elm Street? I've seen like large chunks of it. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So the reference is only half lost on you. Then that's okay. Yeah, I, I had to study it, so I've seen like. 40 minutes of it, probably from various points in the movie. Uh, for the music, yes. Good, good yeah. main theme, you know. Dun, yeah, it's pretty dun, good. Dun, 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 you know. Also, did you study the uh, the, the, the 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 song the the, the girl, the girls sing? Yes. The one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah nice. Anyway, so uh, this is where really the movie kind of picks up. It starts to get tense, and like uh, Miles starts worrying about Becky, and he he runs over to her house and like wakes her up, and we sort of. This is when you start to get a sense that oh, I mean, they've already infiltrated the police because the, the the police guy who shows up, he like he gives oh no, we found a body like so he, like he, he gives them a, an excuse for them to drop it for now until yeah. everyone's been replaced and uh, they eventually find these pods in, uh, in the greenhouse behind like uh, Jack's house I think it is uh, or actually no I think it's his house because they're living at his house uh, because they're they're creeped out yeah. so they're, so they're staying at Miles's house so it's Miles's um, his greenhouse where these pods show up and they en- they end up burning them. Uh, and whatnot, and the burner ones later on. Which I do have to say, are these things coated in gasoline by like naturally? Because like it, it, later on in the movie, he just basically touches it with a flare, and it just bursts into flames <laughs> as, if it's, as if it's coated in flammable substance, which it probably was it's, as a prop. But like, it, it was very dry that year. I uh, sure, sure. 
Uh, but yeah, that's, that's that is a minor minor nitpick. Uh, you can just tell me they're flammable. It's fine. That's cool. Yeah. They're, I'll they're, they're that. alien. They can be flammable. They can be flammable. Of course, they can be flammable. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the what once they realise stuff's going like you know, males like we need to get out of here right now. But then they realise that everyone's going to try and stop them. They're, they're paying attention. Like you know, they go to, you know they pull over for uh, for fuel and like ah they're asking a bit too many questions. Staring at them a bit. Yeah. And then he goes to the trunk and he ends up finding the pods and that's when he ends up, you know, he burns them with the flare, like, they've put them in there, everyone's working against them. So they end up being on the run for the last, like, chunk of the movie and they're running, you know, they're hiding in his his, uh, his office, you know, his, his doctor's office and there's a lot of stuff in there. That's actually when it gets kind of philosophical and he starts talking about people losing their humanity, like, over time. And it's not yeah. until a tragedy strikes and you have to fight for it that you realise how precious it is, which is, you know, where, where the, the, the more obvious themes of the movie come in. Um, and there's, there's a great scene during this where they, they look out the window and they see, because the entire town besides them have been taken over at this point. And you see this, this there's this great shot of all the town. One stay out of town or leaves, there's, like a, there's a truck that leaves, like a bus that is, I think, and then once the bus driver That's leaves... Yeah. Everyone in the town, like all congregates, they all start walking towards the centre, the, 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 the town square. Yeah. And they all do it, and it's actually really creepy. So they just stop. It's a great doing, image, isn't it? And they just all walk. Yeah, it's a fantastic shot. And uh, you know, we see them like they're loading up more trucks with these pods. It's like the plan is clearly to spread to other towns and like, right. eventually take over the world. It's a really good shot, and this is where the, the, the themes come in. And obviously, yeah, the communist idea comes in. It's obviously right at the sort of the dawn of the Cold War. We're right, kind of at the early stages of that. Uh, but I was getting one of the other things that I was getting is this whole idea of uh, he he talks to her about how it's gradual, how over over time he's seen people sort of you know they just get a little bit more cynical, they they kind of lose their their appreciation of life, and it happens over a period of time. And I kind of like the idea here that it's like well this movie's like yeah if it happens gradually you, you don't really notice that it's happening, but then one day you wake up and the world's changed around you and I kind of like the idea that in this movie it literally is they go to sleep and they wake up and the world's changed and yeah. I kind of took that as a kind of weird little warning message and it reminded me of like the rise of fascism in like Nazi Germany or well it wasn't Nazi Germany yet <laughs> obviously because it was the rise of fascism yeah. but the whole idea that if you're not paying attention if you're not paying attention to the events in the world you're not paying attention to the rise of groups like that. One day you'll wake up and go, oh, wait a minute, how did this happen? Why have we got all these yeah. like, it's, things It's also, happening? you know, the idea that he was out of town, he comes back and things are different. It's like, it means, so it's, it's more noticeable from... Him, uh, yeah, from, from his perspective. Yeah, from, from yeah. a distance with a more objective viewpoint of of some distance. It's like, hang on, this isn't how it was. Yeah, yeah for, had some for, bo- for both of them, because they were both out of town. Like, she was away for right. years, yeah. And they come back and it's like, oh, there's something not quite right. But yeah, it's just that idea that if you're if you're not paying attention to the world's events, if you're not paying attention to the rise of, you know, even it's actually kind of a shame how topical this this still is right now. Like the idea of, oh wait a minute, how did we get to this point where that happened? Yeah, yeah, you know? I'm I'm pretty sure many of us said that in the past few weeks. Yeah, so it's like okay, clearly something was brewing and we weren't paying attention, and this is the fear of it. This is this is what the movie's about, and. That's what good science fiction does: is it it, it put, packs in these messages and it it examines something with a fantastical idea and yeah, uh, absolutely. That's that. And of of course, the all the people who are turned are all saying like because because at this point in the movie they stop the pretense that they're pretending that they're okay because it's, all it's just them. the last two. So yeah, it's like there's, no, there's no one else to hide from. And when they catch them, like oh, you, you it's fine. You, you're going to like it. You're like, and they're like, yeah, there's no feelings, but like I feel fine. It's good. Like. And it's this idea of like giving in and becoming it and like accepting it and just letting it happen. It's Again, the easy way out. Yeah, but no, they they choose to fight. He chooses to fight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite little things in the movie is obviously the chase sequence where they're chasing him up the hills and all that are quite good, and they end up in a cave and all the rest of it. All that stuff's good fun. Um, but one one of the things I really like is at the start of the movie when they're just, it's just when they're going on the, on the date, right? They're going to dinner, mm. and. Uh, they're talking. It's just after they've talked to the therapist, and they're talking about, oh, like how would you know if it's really the person? And they're, they're having this conversation, and they kind of stop on the steps, and he goes, "Well," and he, he leans in and kisses her. He's like, "Well, yep, you're Becky." Like he, he's like, so it sets it up that he know like this is a th- you know. I mean, obviously, I mean, a kiss isn't that unique, but it's it has that moment, and it pays off wonderfully. It's, it's the idea that there's there's passion in it, so there's feeling. Yeah. Because at the end of the movie, after he leaves her in the cave alone for a minute, which I thought was dumb, I was like, no, don't leave her alone, that's bad. Because she's clearly struggling to stay awake. This is a bad yeah. idea. But he runs off to check this noise. It's music, but it turns out just to be a radio. Because they think, oh, it's music. Someone's playing music. They must be 
there must be people but it's just the radio in the car and he comes back and he goes to kiss her after like uh you know after he tries to carry her out a little bit he goes to kiss her and it's mid kiss he just stops and he, com- and he comes up and the shot looking down at her afterwards is so creepy the way she's looking back up at him uh, it's really good stuff and it's just you know, it's set up and pay off very simple but it, it does it and it, it works yeah. and you know immediately that he knows it's wrong he knows that something's not right he knows that this yeah, time it, it, that's it's not happened. Becky yeah so it's good stuff so he's on his own and then they end up chasing him out to the highway which is when he's he's jumping around like a raven lunatic and that's when he gets picked up and we kind of we get back to the the start of the story, which is him being questioned by the the police and the the doctor. Uh, of course, I think one thing that maybe separates this from the other versions. Now, I've not seen all of the versions of this because there was the I think in the nineties there was a movie called Body Snatchers, which was another version. And, and don't forget all the versions that aren't named anything like it. Like oh sure, I'm, I'm just it, it just comes to the top of mind like you know uh, World's End. You know the the. Uh... Oh Pagan sure, Frost yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very Invasion of Body Snatchers. You're right, um, but like so, unlike a lot of the other versions, this actually has a kind of. Oh, he's actually convinced these people because basically this other doctor comes in and kind of corroborates the story by like you know casually mentioning that he's seen the pods. Yeah, and, they're moving. Yeah, and the 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 cop and the, the doctor are like, wait a minute, this is true. And they run off to like you know mobilize the forces. Mobilize the forces, set up you know uh, the border patrols at all the states, and don't let anyone with trucks through. And like, and it ends with this like you know the main character like he leans back to them all and sighs with relief that he's done it. And it, it's it basically a hopeful ending that no oh, they're going to win because they they believe it so they're going to fight it. Um, which is a nice message. It's like, kind of like if you do if you are aware and you accept the warning signs, you can fight it and you can succeed. Yeah. Um, but it's very different because I'm pretty sure every other version of this story I've ever seen ends with a really depressing ending where it's now nah, we're screwed I, th- I think that's more reflective of the times whereas here yeah, they say you know, it's 50s it's it's still early you've got the McCarthyism stuff going on but it's still early days yeah it's not because obviously things changed it was the 70s that got really cynical Right. Uh, you know. At the minute, America's still very hopeful. It's very optimistic. Yeah, it was it was, it was the Vietnam stuff and all, all that kind of time period that really changed. Uh, like, the... at, at the minute, they're still coming off, you know, victory o- o- over the Nazis. We're still in that kind of period where yeah, we can it's... do what we want. We can change the world. Yeah, but, we're, you know, we're still pre-Cuban Missile Crisis. We're not quite at the, the real fear right. just yet, but... It's it's getting close, you know. We're, we're... It's, it's getting yeah. there. That's, you know, that's the whole point of the movie. It's like, hey... We're not. We're, we're almost there, but like I said, there's this hopeful ending where they're like, oh, "We can still do it." Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of invasion of the body snatchers in a in a nutshell. Uh, a lot of good moments. It's black and white, of course. It is widescreen though, which is you know it's kind of a yeah, which is an odd combination because typically movies shifted to widescreen after they shifted to color. You know, there's a lot of four by three which had already shifted to color. Uh, mm. So seeing widescreen black and white is a little bit more rare. Um, you know, I, I'm more familiar with it happening, say, in like, Japanese cinema. Like, a lot of Kurosawa's movies were black and white, but widescreen... Like, yeah, they shifted. were black and white for a lot longer, though. They, they were, yeah. That, that was, I don't know if that was maybe a choice, or if it was just the, the country's right, film industry. The, the, was... the technology was presum- was there, but, you know, maybe it was just a cultural thing where they just maybe. didn't yeah. move up with that. Or, or maybe the idea with Kurosawa is he was making all these samurai movies set in the past, that he just said, well, no, so black it, and white. the tone, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, clearly this this was yeah. Obviously, color existed in nineteen fifty seven, but it, I imagine it's a low budget film. It feels like it probably was low budget. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think it does anything too particularly fancy. Like you know, like I say, you know, they designed the pods, but that's it. No, in I mean term- it, it, it's fancy in direction and it's fancy and it's uh and it's writing, but it's not fancy. No, in term- in, yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's a lot of people in rooms talking for a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So they they get away with a lot of things. I, honestly, him running about in the highway felt was like that's where the budget went. <laughs> Definitely, because you know he's dodging cars and it feels you know. Um, so so no, uh, I, I I think it's a solid movie of its time. Now, admittedly, I don't think it's the best invasion of the body snatch. I think the seventy eight version does take that does take that that away uh, from that, it that, a little bit. Fair. I've not seen it yet. I've got it wait, waiting to watch. So I'm sure we'll get to it at some point. But, but I've, I've generally, I think that's the consensus from most people but i do think this one gets a little bit forgotten and overlooked and i don't think it deserves to be overlooked because it's actually a really solid movie it is yeah so. it really is it's it's a lot of fun you know the messaging's all there and it again maybe you could argue it's a bit too on the nose by the time he's given the speech but that's all right 
Yeah, and it, like I say, it's well shot. It, it, it looks, you know, the, the, the widescreen black and white imagery. And it's, you know, it's, it's about two... I think the Blu-ray said 2.0 to 1. So it's just, it's, yeah. it's actually it's funny actually it's it's basically the the Netflix ratio that a lot of their shows have now. Yeah, uh, you're right. But before Netflix started doing that, and before I think Amazon do it with some shows as well, but like before they started doing that with some of their shows, that was a really rare ratio. Like you only seen it in a few select movies. It wasn't particularly popular. Yeah, obviously but, running time is a little bit short. Like you know, it's like 75, 80 minutes, so it it never overstays its welcome. Oh yeah, it's bang on eighty minutes. Yeah, right. There we go then. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's brisk. It's uh, I think it's just a really solid solid science fiction movie, and I, I don't even want to call it a B movie. I think it elevates past that. I think I think it's it's strong enough in all of its its you know in terms of acting, in terms of writing, in terms of directing. I feel like there's too much style to think of it as a B movie. Yeah, I, I think the fact that it it resists the temptation to show you a goofy effect and it keeps it on right. the drama. It, it, it always plays it straight, and you know it's yeah. like it's very serious. Like no, this is this is real. There is horror of it. And honestly, by the time that her turn comes, when he kisses her, and it's not really her anymore. As much as you can see it coming, it still affects you because you care about the characters. And I think that that that's the big thing is it makes you care enough about them that you you actually give a shit that. You know, she's lost her humanity. She's not her anymore. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of B movies. You watch them. You, you know, you have fun, but you're very aware that they're kind of goofy or whatever. Yeah. Whereas this is, this isn't that. This is a no. It's a proper film. Proper film. Not, not to diminish the others. Well, with that, is there any scenes or other moments you want to discuss or ideas you want to talk about before we we get onto the old ratings section of the show? No, I think we covered it pretty thoroughly. Like. Like you say, all, all the major stuff that that goes on, it, it's because it's of the short runtime. It all plays in very tightly to its themes. It does. There's it not. There's nothing that's like that feels like it's wasted. And I real, I actually really like the progression of the movie because it, it like 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 we kind of discussed. It starts with these these teases that something's wrong. Like, you know, characters. And then by the end, you've got a whole town chasing him. Exactly. You know, characters are. Like hinting, like you know, the kid's scared of his mother. It's not his mother anymore, so he's like terrified. And then you, you find the body, and it all you know elevates. Like it's like, it's like it, it, imagine it's like a dial on a on an amplifier to you know go with some spinal tap, uh, kind of reference. And and like it's it, you can just see it. You almost visualize it like cranking up. Like it's yeah. at a one or a two at the start of the movie, and then it, they, they get to that house, and there's a body there. It just goes up to like five, and it's like okay, right, there's yeah. something something's afoot, and then. When they, when they start to leave town, it's like, oh, it's right up to an eight. But then when they're being chased for their lives at the end, it's like, oh, now we're at ten. Possibly eleven to keep the... It could quite possibly. If, you, yeah. if you're going to go all out, you might as well go to eleven. So, exactly. Um, so, no, I think it's well structured. I think it's well acted. I think it's well written, well directed. Uh, there was maybe one or two moments where I, could, I was maybe disappointed that I could see the opportunity for a really good sort of shot or moment, and it, it didn't take it. Um mm. One key example is when he runs to the highway and you see that the, the townsfolk are like back off in the distance. There's a, there's a moment where you see him in the highway and you can just sort of see, like they're not really framed pro- like in the scene as such, but you can kind of see them off in the distance. And you can see like a line of them in silhouette and it actually looked really creepy. And I thought, that's a missed opportunity not to actually go to a shot of that. Like a shot of them all lined up in silhouette, like at the edge of the town kind of thing. Yeah, looking yeah over. that's what you're Because instead it cuts back to them, it's just a sort of normal shot, this normal wide shot from the side and you can see them all mm. clearly and I thought, no, no, that was like a really atmospheric shot you almost had there. Like, you know, do it, go in for it. Yeah. Like I say, the, the body not getting a close-up of the face and seeing how creepy it is not having features. Like, I, th- I think that was maybe a missed opportunity. Um, You know, and yeah, maybe, you know, it has to like dance around the fact that maybe it doesn't have the budget that, but, you know, that maybe forces it to be interested in other ways and it, it, I think it mostly achieves well, that's it. It. So. I, I, it. It kind of plays like a thriller. Everything's escalating. It's like, oh, where's the... At first of all, it's like, where's the danger? And then it's like, oh, it's there. And, you know, it's trying to escape and get out. And it's it's very... It, it's quite... It's high stakes and low stakes at the same time because obviously it's high stakes, you know, it's a whole town. It's, you know, the, the world. But at the same time, it's this, this one couple that we're attached to. Yeah, yeah. And for a little while, it's two couples. I mean, I mean you kind of know yeah. that they're just there to take the take the fall so to establish the danger for them but no i mean even they're okay like they're, they're interested enough and you know i, I actually I actually kind of like that they're they're fascinated at first like when they find this body they're like oh this is weird and this is interesting what's going on yeah like they don't just report it straight away because there's a mystery to it and they they, yeah. they have to know there's there's that intrigue 
they're almost excited that something's happening at first, but of course it turns to horror when it's like, oh no, this is too serious. And again, you could almost relate that to what I was talking about with the rise of these things. Like, oh, it's interesting. There's some nut jobs. Oh, this is funny. Let's laugh at that. It, you know, we, we, we follow the news. It's like, oh, okay. There's, there's some interesting stuff going on. And then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is terrifying. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like you, you don't quite acknowledge the, the, the actual threat that's there. Uh, but, you know, so keep an open mind and actually realize that, you know, you should be doing things uh, to maybe, maybe yeah, Basically, just be aware. Be aware, yes. That's the message of the movie, I think, more than anything else. Don't just be comfortable and think, oh, because everything feels like the ideal, you know, idealistic 50 life America, white picket fences, all that jazz, doesn't necessarily mean there's not something brewing under the surface. So exactly. keep an eye on it, because it'll come back and bite you. Uh, so yes, let's rate the movie, uh, the old 10. Mm, okay. Uh, I'm thinking a 7.5. 7.5? 7. 5. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's um, very good. I'm, I'm going to up you a little bit. I'm going to go to a solid eight. It's fair. And it's solid. I think it's a great movie. And I think I think it's. I don't think it, it reaches heights of maybe you know the seven eight body snatchers or uh, some other science fiction films that I love you know more for you know various reasons depending on what they are. Yeah. But um, I think it's a great movie that it it does everything that it wants to do and it does it st- it stands out amongst the fifty sci fi fare be quite a bit as well and. Mm. As much as I am sick of it being remade, I can't deny that clearly it's left enough of a uh, an imprint that people... it's it's got a core idea that's simple enough that you can adapt, mm. and at the same time is still scarily relevant. So why why stop making those stories if it's still going to be relevant? Because I'm sick of seeing them. Like the, 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 there was two well, good ones. Maybe if people learnt the damn lessons, they wouldn't have to keep teaching us. Well, sure, that's fine and well, but, like, <laughs> you know, apparently they're working on a new remake, and I'm like, you know, we've, we've had, had it, like, five times at this point, and that's just counting the, the ones the that are actually... The ones with yeah. the name, yeah. Um, you know, see, whereas like, something like uh, uh, The World's End, or even, like, the Christmas episode of Community, where it's basically the plot of Body Snatchers, mm. except that it's about joining the Glee Club, <laughs> like... Those are fine because they're kind of like homages and parodies, and like they're they're, they're, they're po- aware of it and playing with the, yeah, the they're, idea. They're, yeah, they're poking fun at the tropes. Whereas th- this is a little bit, you know, just straight yeah, yeah. remaking of it is is a, a little bit different. So, um, but no, there you go. So that has been Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is uh, which is which is good stuff. Um, yeah. So this is I actually I should probably announce what the September vote is for. Uh, did, did you not do that last time? Oh, we didn't, did we? I don't know. I don't think so. Cause I'm just querying. Like, probably, maybe you should have done. Because by the time this goes up, it'll be September. It will. It will be September. So yeah, I, I don't typically announce them in advance. Oh. It's usually the first one maybe, in the maybe, month. Maybe you should. I don't know. Just calling you out as I see it. Well, no, because the, because the, the previous one's still active and like, I mean, I can't announce the winner yet because we're recording it slightly before the end of the month, so I can't actually announce that yet, but. Uh, I can tell you what the next one is if, if people would like to. Uh... I'd like to know as well because I've completely forgotten. You completely forgotten. Yeah, um, we 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 did this like a week or two ago, so you know a lot of things have happened since then. Well, because obviously the movie is voted for by our patrons in September for uh, October, and out in October is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh, because of that, we are doing a theme of uh, cyborgs and androids and. Sort of that kind of thing. So uh, the options, uh, if I can remember them, are Robocop, Ex Machina, iRobot, and Big Hero 6. Ah, uh, yeah. There you go. Those are four options. Well done. Uh, uh, okay, I, see. Um, I have no hope of doing that in streams though when I'm announcing those because there's like... Uh, 12 <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's like three votes for Screams because it's for October and because we're doing a lot of extra episodes for Halloween and all that jazz. Uh, but no, so that's the theme for uh, next month's vote. So if you're if you're a patron over at MailFuzz uh, TV on Patreon.com, uh, basically the five dollar tier lets you vote on uh, a, a movie once a month, uh, and that's for each of the shows as well. You get to do it on Screams, you get to do it on one one put one in flux. Uh, we have the new sh- monthly show Overload, which is me and Matt. Uh, you can vote on that as well. So you know, there's lots of votes. Uh, if you want to do that over there, but uh, otherwise, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, if you want to comment and let us know what you think of the movie down below, that's cool too. And um, get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz. I think I just said that. It's late. You, you might have done. <laughs> this 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 sometimes happens with the outros. He kind of forgets where he was. 
I was also holding back a sneeze there for a minute, so I was, you know, very much confuddled. Very much confuddled. Um, I need to sleep, and hopefully I don't get replaced with a, a body snatcher. I'm not sure we'd notice. Maybe not. But I think there might be one one or two key differences. When, when, when I do an episode, right, if I do a show and an actor who was in Buffy comes up and I don't do the, you know, that or... The, the gleeful on, awareness. Yeah, the, the, the oh, that, that person was on the hit television show, Buffy oh. the Vampire Slayer. If I don't do that, then, you know, I might, I might not be me How anymore. How did you manage to get Buffy into this? God damn it. Life finds a way. You force a way. Life finds a way. God damn it. I just referenced Jurassic Park as well. I'm on a roll. So, uh, but that, that is us. So, thank you once again for watching. Keep watching movies. You'll be back next week uh, with something, which I, I don't know yet. I, I, I never announce it anyway, but I'm just like, I actually can't think of what it is in my head. Um, and uh, coming soon as well, we'll. we'll We've had a nice little spell recently of doing some random movies and some movies we've been wanting to get to. Uh, I think coming up soon we'll be back to doing a few uh, movies for yeah. you know you know prequels to sequels that are coming out kind of thing. Next week, seeing as you were just talking about it all, okay. Next week is actually the Patreon's pick. Oh, is it? Oh, right. we're doing that earlier this month. It is. Is, it, uh, is that because there's mo- new movies coming out and we have to do the previous is. ones? It, so... it, it, that's exactly the reason why we put it where it is. All right, so the month is stacked with those. Okay, that's yeah. that's fair enough. So you can expect the winner of this month's Patreon vote uh, next week then. Uh, So that is us. So thanks for watching, guys. Keep watching movies, and we'll see you next time.